Well, this is, of course, the uh, early breast cancer consensus guidelines. So we're focusing on uh, the challenges in treating early stage HER2 positive disease. Uh, there's a really interesting talk on heterogeneity. I think one of the um, interesting aspects of HER2 is that most of the tumors are fairly homogeneous, but there is a subset of tumors that are quite heterogeneous where some of the tumor cells are HER2 positive and HER2 negative and trying to understand how to manage that. There's also an interesting talk talking about that heterogeneity in hormone receptor positive versus hormone receptor negative disease, which I think will be quite interesting um, and also brings up the controversy of whether or not we should be differentiating therapy based on these biologic findings and how we should really define heterogeneity. Um, and then there are two talks that are um, evaluating the optimal neoadjuvant and adjuvant therapy approaches. We generally prefer neoadjuvant therapy for all but the smallest tumors that are HER2 positive. It is helpful sometimes for the very small tumors to understand the node status and not to over-treat. So in those smaller tumors, surgery first is preferable. But otherwise, understanding the response in HER2 positive disease has allowed us to modify the post-neoadjuvant therapy and improve outcomes. Uh, and then, of course, the next step is how are we incorporating newer therapies into the treatment of HER2-positive disease? Uh, and we have new antibody drug conjugate, trastuzumab druxtecan, that has shown remarkable efficacy in the second line setting against TDM1. So, of course, the natural question is in patients who don't achieve a PCR, could treatment with TDXD improve outcome more than TDM1 or trastuzumab amtansine? in the uh, post-neoadjuvant setting. So it's really looking at these two, you know, first generation versus later generation um, ADCs. I think that generally the expectation is because of the remarkable difference in outcome in uh, Destiny Breast uh, 03 that looked at uh, trastuzumab amtansine versus trastuzumab druxtecan as second line therapy for metastatic HER2 positive disease um, that TDXD will likely be superior. But then you carry it on to the next step. Could you just give an antibody drug conjugate in the neoadjuvant setting? Then you wouldn't need to give all that chemotherapy. We've already shown in a number of very nicely done large randomized trials that non-anthracycline-based regimens seem to have a similar outcome to anthracycline-based regimens. We're not really sure who needs anthracyclines. Maybe the heterogeneity question will help us look at that as well. Um, but there are neoadjuvant study ongoing. There is a neoadjuvant study ongoing that's looking at trastuzumab druxtecan in various combinations and sequences. And there are a lot of novel antibody drug conjugates and oral tyrosine kinase inhibitors uh, that are also being studied in HER2 positive disease. The uh, now sort of current approved uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor of choice is tucatinib in the metastatic setting because it has a better toxicity profile, uh, although neratinib uh, is approved for the treatment of patients who have very high risk disease um, after a year of trastuzumab. But it wasn't studied after an antibody drug conjugate, so we don't really understand how to use it. And now there's an ongoing study looking at tucatinib uh, in combination with trastuzumab amtansine to see if that further improves outcome in patients with residual disease after neoadjuvant therapy. So the overall sort of approach in HER2 positive disease is, you know, you give the therapy up front that's a little bit less in patients who respond very rapidly, great. In patients who don't have as good a response, you can gradually add things on. Some studies are looking at this in the neoadjuvant setting, most in the post-neoadjuvant setting with residual disease. And then in patients who have hormone receptor positive, luminal, more luminal B-like disease, should you be using different endocrine therapy approaches? Are CDK4-6 inhibitors appropriate in that setting? So there's a lot of questions. It's a really interesting area. We're really learning from what we're doing in the metastatic setting.